Meghan Markle was so upset by her estranged father's repeated attacks in the media that she wrote him a letter begging him to stop victimizing her, say friends, who also voiced concern that the emotional trauma of dealing with her dad could have a negative effect on the Duchess's baby. Five close friends of the Duchess, who have not revealed their names as they don't want to jeopardize their relationship with her, told people that Meghan penned a letter to her father, Thomas Markle, shortly after her wedding to Prince Harry. Dad, I'm so heartbroken. I love you. I have one father. Please stop victimizing me through the media so we can repair our relationship, she is said to have written to Thomas after he gave a flurry of negative press interviews about her. The five female friends, reported to be in Meghan's innermost circle, say Thomas then responded in a long letter of his own, in which he asked his daughter for a photo shoot. She feels like, that's the opposite of what I'm saying. I'm telling you I don't want to communicate through the media, and you're asking me to communicate through the media. Did you hear anything I said? They said. I think she will always feel genuinely devastated by what he has done, they told the magazine. The group of unnamed friends also voiced their concerns that the strain of her ongoing estrangement with her father, and the stress of dealing with his public rants about her, could well be taking its toll on Meghan and Prince Harry's unborn child. We worry about what this is doing to her and the baby, they said. It's wrong to put anyone under this level of emotional trauma, let alone when they're pregnant. Since Meghan's wedding to Prince Harry in May 2018, which Thomas did not attend, her estranged father has spoken out on several occasions about his daughter, addressing everything from his personal relationship with her to the Duchess's alleged feud with Kate Middleton. In December, he spoke exclusively with the Mail on Sunday about the wall of silence that he said he has faced from Meghan and Prince Harry, since their wedding, insisting that he had made dozens of attempts to reach his daughter via texts and letters but that every effort to get in touch had been ignored. At the time, he also insisted that he had been villainized by the public and that the lies spread about him had caused the rift with his daughter to become all the more serious. Months earlier he spoke out to criticize his daughter for her ongoing refusal to speak with him, confessing that he was really hurt that she's cut me off completely, while hitting out at his daughter over her sense of superiority. However, Meghan's friends are now insisting that Thomas knows exactly how to reach his daughter, but say he has never actually tried to get in contact. He knows how to get in touch with her, added one longtime friend, adding that Meghan's phone number had never changed, despite Thomas insisting previously that her contact information had been changed. He's never called, he's never texted. It's super painful because Meg was always so dutiful. And at the same time, because she's a daughter, she has a lot of sympathy for him. According to one friend, Thomas's claims about how his daughter and Prince Harry responded to his staged paparazzi pictures are also untrue, which happened six days before the wedding. Meghan had reached out to her dad the Saturday before the wedding, after hearing that the story was about to come that he had staged pictures with the paparazzi. So Meg calls Tom and asks him, and he's swearing up and down that it's not true. The next day the pictures came out. Even with all that. Meg and Harry were still so focused on getting him to London. The images the photographer took in exchange for money showed him being fitted for the suit he planned to wear to his daughter's wedding as well as holding a book about the royals to show he was researching the future in-laws. One friend told People that even after Thomas's staged paparazzi photos came out, Meghan was still adamant about having her father at her wedding. At no point was there talk of now that we know he lied, he's in trouble. Tom wouldn't take her calls, wouldn't take Harry's calls. They claimed that when a car arrived to take the 74-year-old to the airport for the wedding, he refused to get in. A short time later, the former actress heard he'd suffered a heart attack. Thomas reportedly underwent surgery the Wednesday before the wedding on Saturday to repair the damage. Meghan then released a statement through Kensington Palace on that Thursday to further explain the situation with her father. Sadly. My father will not be attending our wedding, the statement read at the time. I have always cared for my father and hope he can be given the space he needs to focus on his health. She's calling and texting, even up to the night before the wedding, Meghan's friend told People. It was like, please pick up. I love you, 
and I'm scared. It was endless. A former colleague said it was a shame that Meghan was being portrayed as someone who didn't care about her own dad. She took care of her father with such incredible generosity. The fact that this could be flipped around, that she was acting out, or not caring for him, is preposterous. They continued that Meghan had never really had a relationship with her half-brother Thomas Markle Jr., and half-sister Samantha Markle, who has been particularly critical of Meghan in the press. Samantha, on multiple occasions, has blasted Meghan for being selfish and pushy. She also attacked Meghan for allegedly ghosting her entire family in order to be one with the royals. The estranged sister is now planning on releasing two bombshell books about Meghan in the months to come. The first part is expected to release in April or May, right around the same time Meghan is due to give birth. But friends claim Meghan hardly ever had a relationship with her half-siblings, like Samantha has previously suggested. They have been made to appear as siblings who had this falling out, and that's not the truth at all," said the friend, explaining that both Thomas Jr. and Samantha were in their teens by the time Meghan was born. They were not a part of her life. The anonymous friends were furious about the diva claims that have trailed Meghan since her engagement to Harry and that she has become difficult since moving to the palace. The 37-year-old was accused by royal insiders of demanding that the 14th-century St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle was sprayed with air freshener to mask the musky smell. She didn't throw a fit about the tiara or ask for fragrance to be sprayed in the church, a close confidant said. These are outrageous claims and 100% untrue. Another branded the claim ridiculous saying that Meghan has a close relationship with God, which she took very seriously and would never disrespect the church with such demands. The Duchess also came under fire after her PA quit just six months into the role, as it was revealed she would email staff instructions as early as 5 a.m. The email thing is such a weird slant on someone who is actually an incredibly organized, diligent, focused, hard-working person, her former colleague said. She was always that way. She showed up on set more prepared than anyone else. Another friend added, there will be these stories about the turnover in their offices, and the fact is they're all natural courses of employment, nothing to do with Meg or Harry or their style. Friends also rejected rumors of any feuding between Meghan and her sister-in-law Kate Middleton. These started when Meghan and Harry announced they were moving away from Kensington Palace in London to instead live in Frogmore Cottage in Windsor. She is the same person, they said though everything around her has changed. There is nothing behind the feud with Kate. It's completely untrue. A friend and former co-star from L.A. said that Meghan preferred a fairly simple life. She described visiting Meghan and Harry's cottage, where the former Suits star was more than happy to get her hands dirty. We had a couple of days together recently, they told the magazine. Her husband was out of town on work. In the room she made up for me. There was a candle lit by the bed, slippers and a robe. We were the only two in the house. It was our time. She made the most lovely meals. She made tea every day. It was raining and muddy outside, so the dogs got all dirty, and she's wiping them off with towels. How much she loves her animals, how much she loves her friends, how much she loves feeding you, taking care of you, none of that has changed. They insist that the public portrayal of the difficult Duchess could not be further from the down-to-earth, selfless friend they know. We've all been to their cottage, another pal added, describing the couple's former home at Kensington Palace as Nottingham Cottage, a small but cozy. The friends insist that the caring Meghan seen chatting to the public on royal engagements really was the real deal. When you see her at walkabouts. When she crouches down to talk to the kids and genuinely has real conversations with people, that's Meg. That's how she crouches down with our kids at home. That's how she plays with them. That's how she engages with people and how she always has. The confidant told people that Megan stayed grounded through meditation, and even on the biggest day of her life, her wedding to Harry last May, she remained a sea of calm throughout. We could feel Meg's energy, they said. The calm that she moves with. That's how it felt because that's how she and Harry are as a couple. She was also the first friend they turned to for advice, 
and Megan was always insistent that she hear about her friends' lives before talking about her own, and now they want to help her in the same way that she has done for them so many times. We want to stand up against the global bullying we're seeing, against Megan, the friends said. Meg has silently sat back and endured the lies and untruths. It emerged last week that Kensington Palace staff are spending hours each week moderating online abuse aimed at Meghan, a former star of the show Suits, and the Duchess of Cambridge. It's unclear who the friends are, but Meghan's former Nanaki Privy has previously shared a plethora of childhood photos to various outlets, including DailyMail.com. Thomas Markle gave yet another interview about his daughter in December the fourth interview since the fallout with Harry and Meghan after he staged paparazzi pictures shortly before the couple's wedding in May. I have been frozen out and I can't stay silent, he said. I have made dozens of attempts to reach my daughter via text and letters, but she and Harry have put up a wall of silence. They have done what they once told me not to do, they are believing everything negative that has been written about me. So I am reaching out to them, once again to try to correct the lies and get the truth out there. Everyone says, why don't I just shut the F up? That Megan can't speak to me because I'll give away secrets. But that's bull. I've been accused of every terrible thing you can think of. In one magazine they had an awful story about Prince Charles right beside one about me. But no one is shunning Prince Charles. Meanwhile, Megan appears to be enjoying her pregnancy during her royal engagement with Prince Harry. An adorable video clip taken last week appears to show Meghan feeling baby Sussex getting active in the womb during a tour of the Bristol Old Vic Theatre last Friday. The Duchess is expecting her first child in April and is now well into the third trimester, when movements from babies in the womb become much stronger. As Meghan's due date draws closer, a longtime friend revealed that she had always wanted a big family. Meg would come home with me at Thanksgiving and said it's so fun to be around a big family gathering. I wish I had that. The whistle stop tour of the West Country City saw the parents to be also visit a sex worker charity where Megan wrote messages of hope on bananas, which are distributed across the city to sex workers. 